We're going to catch up here on some of the things that happened the last couple of weeks. The Voice Roundtable Recap, as we like to call it. I'm David Comer. I'm Carol Brown. I'm Andrea Blum. And uh, guys, uh, before we get started into what just happened, we waved goodbye to one of your favorites, Brian Keith, uh, two weeks ago, and Sylvia Yacoub from Team Christina. Uh, Brian Keith was, of course, on Team Adam. Uh, what were your thoughts about those two going out? Um, I was a little surprised that Brian left so soon. I thought he deserved to stick around more so than a few others that are still on there. But, um, and Sylvia, she was, you know, pretty solid, but I didn't think she was really a fan favorite, so I wasn't surprised when she left. I'm a Brian Keith <laughs> fan, as you know, so I was upset by that, and I would have kept Sylvia over some other people, too. But mm -hmm. I'm not America. <laughs> For me, Sylvia, I, I just think hit kind of, she kind of plateaued. I didn't really see that much more from her after a certain point. But, you know, que sera. So now, moving on to this week, uh, we ended up with, um, you know, we, had, we were down to, the field was narrowed to eight. So we're keeping six going, going to next week. And um, <clears throat> just talking about some of the performances from Monday, Amanda Brown did Someone Like You by uh, Adele, but with a rock element. Pretty cool. I, I loved it. it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved the arrangement. I will go on record as saying I think the arrangement was better than Adele. Wow. Whoa, I agree. Out. I agree with that. I, I do. I, I just think it was, especially taking something we've heard a million times and making it different, uh, in a different, totally arranged differently. And I thought, like, with a rock element to a song that's been played to death, really neat. Nailed it. She killed it. She's probably my favorite now and yeah she can sing whatever and the arrangement was fantastic I love that she turned it into a rocker because like you said it's a great song but we've heard it to death which happens a lot with Adele songs they just play them play them out but um yeah I loved it I thought it was fantastic yeah and in fact I thought and I hate to say it because we love Trevin but in that duet last night with him with uh, her and Trevin Hunt doing that uh, Neo and Rihanna song um, I, I hate to love you, or I love to hate you, whatever. Um, I hate to love you, yeah. That I thought she made Trevin look bad, because her voice is so good. Uh, it's just more refined, I think, anyways. But Nicholas David, what's going on? Marvin Gaye, uh, right in the wheelhouse. Perfect. Smooth as silk, right? Yeah. Perfect, yep. Loved it. Uh, Des Duran did a crappy song by a crappy artist. <laughs> Justin Bieber, You Smile. What is he, singing to 12-year-olds? There's a reason his ass went home, and that's part of it. What a terrible child song choice. I was asleep for his performance, so that speaks volumes. Yeah, you didn't miss anything <laughs> I, except some sweet hair. I pretty much believe that that's the vote they were going for. <clears throat> but after doing Buble last week, though, and Michael Buble doesn't appeal to 12 year olds, though, you know? Right. So I thought, and he excelled, I thought, he doing. Killed, um, killed it last week. <clears throat> yeah, um, doing that song. Um, I forget, uh, yeah, I forget the name of it. But So I thought he did really well, even though I don't think it's originally Michael Buble. But anyway, no, so. Nina Simone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yep. So, Des Duran, yeah, I thought, <clears throat> yeah, he's come along really nicely, and I thought he hit his high point last week, but I saw him, yeah. Uh, Cassidy Pope, Are You Happy Now by Michelle Branch, <laughs> when I was not happy. <clears throat> yeah, she fell back into her old pattern this week. I, when she started singing, I thought, is this an, I, I couldn't remember who sang it. I thought it was another Avril Lavigne song, and I said, no, they're not doing that to her, are they? But she was so amazing last week with that country Over song. Over you, right. Over and you by Randall Lambert. And she Michelle. just kind of, yeah, she just kind of backtracked this week. I really, and we've always said, she had a, I, I always thought she had a little bit of a Stevie Nicks or Dolly Parton sound to her voice. Sure. So the country thing worked a little. And I thought last week, Over You, just knocked my socks off. Well, she got a tweet from Michelle, so... <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, well. You don't read those at the bottom of the screen? I don't know. I can't keep up with it all. But no, I just thought, here we go again. Same old, same old. Just fell back into the old, old uh, rut. And I just said, uh, I didn't, didn't like it. So, um, although she's come along as an artist, I have to give her that. And like I said, I, I was eating crow and it was delicious last week. <laughs> when she's saying, over you. Um, but again, just a different kind of, you know, different kind of song. Um, I thought she was great with. Next up, let's talk uh, The Greatest Love of All, Whitney Houston's uh, Greatest Love of All, Trevin Hunt. And uh, as my wife Robin said, uh, what's next for him? Is he going to be singing Endless Love next week? Because it's been like enough of the power balance. Why? Why? I don't know why they're doing this to him. They're giving him such crappy song choices. I mean, he gets Michael Bolton the other <clears> week, <throat> and now the most trite, you know, Whitney Houston song there is. I 
just, he, he was my favorite and he's losing me every week and I'm trying to hang on, but they're making it really hard. Um, didn't think, you know, I was scared he was going to go home this week. That's how much I thought that song was a dud for him. And song choice aside, he's really good when he yeah. gets going on the power singing yeah. part, but he's still kind of weak on the... Right, he's inconsistent. Yeah. On the and of he it. needs to bring the house down by the end or else it's not going to happen for him. It's weird. Yeah, I agree totally on that. And I thought he'd be farther along at this point, a little bit. Oh, definitely. Know? As far as just being more consistent. Cody Ballou, Somebody to Love by Queen. I didn't like it at all. I love Cody to death. But I thought the song did him no favors. And weren't there uh, background singers or something? Yes. I think there was a choir. choir. Forget the choir, people. Yeah. Like, it takes away from what we're trying to pay attention to. It's like you can have dancing cats, you know, <laughs> swallowing flames of fire, you know, in the background, as Christina loves to orchestrate. But it's you lose the intent of the show, I think. And for him, he was kind of drowned out, in my opinion. He just, yeah, <clears throat> talking to a big Queen fan here, and he just <clears throat> didn't pull it off. I don't know. He had moments, maybe, but um, he just warbles a little bit sometimes, and kind of sounds like Las Vegas lounge singery a little bit. So, yeah, I didn't love it. However, I still would have kept him before someone else that was kept. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> Well, we'll talk about uh, Terry McDermott, who sang Blake Shelton's uh, Over. Yeah, so anyways, I, yeah, I, I forget the name of the song that Cassidy sang, but anyways. But Terry McDermott sang Over, Blake Shelton. Uh, it was weird to see him do country. I thought, eh. My thoughts, too. Eh. I'm kind of tired of him. I think Terry McDermott, for me, I'm kind of uh, kind of over him. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I don't know. I think we've seen the best of him, and I'd like to hear him sing different stuff, but maybe not country. Yeah, I guess he does need something different now. He's really talented, very professional, but we are getting bored. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Now, Melanie Martinez is someone who doesn't make me bored, sang Too Close by Alex Clare. And I thought, uh, you really got, I mean, I, agree, I will admit this much, her whisper thing is getting a little old for me. But she did get a chance to belt a few points during this song, and I really liked it. And I know the, uh, let's just let the hate seep through and just let's get it out. I would have traded her for Cody still, but mm -hmm. that's just me. To me, she should have been gone way back when they got rid of Michaela. So, <laughs> so uh, I think uh, I think Melanie Martinez is a great artist. She just keeps getting better every week. You're not and, alone. Uh, I've You're been... just alone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely alone in this room. So I'm a big fan, and I think uh, I, you know. Then the next thing you know, we had the eliminations last night. We end up keeping uh, Amanda, Nicholas, Cassidy. Melanie, Trevin, Cohen, Cody, and, uh, or no, Terry. We, we lose Cody, uh, Cody's gone, and we also lose Des Duran. Yay. Any surprises there? Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now it was time for Des to go. And I would have probably traded Melanie for Cody. And Team Christina is no more with that. Yep. After her shameless filibustering and um, <laughs> shameless uh, disinterest and kind of a left-handed slap she would make verbally on I was so it was beyond was passive brutal. aggressive. It was aggressive. Oh, it was <laughs> just an immature child, and I'm so glad she's the, someone we always said had the weakest teams left mm -hmm. with nobody, you know, in the smoke clears, and it's it couldn't be more deserving, you know, because uh, I think I think, and then you look, I hate to say it, you look at the reviews of her latest album Lotus, and then you look at how America's voted, uh, they're kind of going the same way, you know, her yeah. album's not exactly ripping up the charts. She may be the voice of a generation, one of the great voices, but. It's a coach on the voice, eh, you know, losing a little something. So, uh, and then, you know, obviously, you know, losing Cody, bit of a showman, but I think that kind of overshadowed his actual vocal talent and his oh, yeah. potential as a uh, singer to some extent. He kind of got lost in the mix, I thought. Um, so, lost in the wash, so to speak. But, you know, it's kind of tough. But now going forward, uh, you've got two artists apiece for the other three coaches. And, um, I think it's really going to come down to song choices, and we'll see what yeah. happens there. It has a lot to do with it now, I think, yeah. I'm still convinced that someone on Team Seal is going to take it. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that someone's Nicholas David because Trevin's been flagging. Yes. Um, Should take it. Should. Yes. Who knows? This Cassidy <laughs> Wolf thing is out of control. Right. Because even on iTunes, this last song, which I thought was garbage with Michelle Brands, yeah. it was on iTunes, it was like number four the last time I checked at like four in the morning on iTunes. She's got some night. crazy fan base out there. I don't know who they are or where they are, but she's got them. And by the way, I thought the group numbers have been really kind of crappy for the most part. But I thought we probably saw the best group number as a whole for the course of this show 
with uh, the singing of um, Rhythm of Love by, uh, by Cody, by Nicholas, Terry, and Melanie. I thought that was like the best, best one we've seen. It was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of group numbers. I, that's one thing that turned me off on American Idol. So cheesy and just a time killer. And when they started doing them, don't the voice, give I was me not an, happy. Don't get me started on the time killing questions that uh, <laughs> Carson is forced to ask. And then you've got like two minutes left, in the, and you've still got four people to eliminate. Right. I'm like, dude. And then the unnecessary, I have to say, the unnecessary Christina Milian when she's up there talking. Oh, What's boy. the point? I don't see that at all. Just uh, get rid. Talk about some prattle. <laughs> I think it's just a chance to get the Carson out a break. But yeah, that is yeah, the social media uh, center. What a bunch of bunk. Yeah. That's been terrible. That's been it's totally like the momentum like killer for like you're oh, watching the show and then you hit that like they kind of hit, kind of hit the refrigerator. Right. Trying to give you time probably to right. join the tweets. And maybe it's just not our generation, but the whole like let's see what's trending right now. How about my middle finger at you wasting our time? <laughs> You know what I, mean? I could not care less. I don't. I love the show, but honestly, I don't even vote. <laughs> Just I watch it and then I kind of forget. And yeah, I I like it, but I don't care that much. Really. Right. Well, I do vote, but you know, that's, I mean, that's why Melanie's still there. <laughs> Anyways, catch up with us next week. We'll break it down best we can.